Are you ready to study for NCLEX? It's Monday, you know what it is. This is Let's Talk NCLEX. I am here with you, super excited. My name is Regina Callion, the number one NCLEX instructor on the planet. We're gonna be going over some really good NCLEX questions from my question bank. Again, this is your study session for Monday. Let's get into it. The topics, the topics for today are going to be coming from a very challenging, a very challenging nursing um, discipline. It's called integrated concepts. And a lot of nursing students, when I say integrated concepts, they're not even sure what I'm talking about. They're not even sure what I'm talking about. So when we do these questions, I want you to see that integrated concepts can be many things. It's literally the integration of all the disciplines on your NCLEX exam. So this is it. This is Remar Review. You're here. You're live. You made it. We're going to get into some, uh, some, some NCLEX questions. Also, we never leave Monday. We never leave Monday without Monday motivation. So my NCLEX motivation is this face the competition. And I'm gonna tell you who the competition is if you're not familiar with it. If you are in nursing school or a nursing student, there is a resource that I wanna tell you about. It is Quick Facts for NCLEX. And I will say that this book is the best place to start if you don't know what you're doing. If you feel like I'm lost, I don't know what to do to get this board exam finally passed, the Quick Facts for NCLEX, it is a five-star book on Amazon. You can pick it up today. It is going to be extremely helpful. I have nursing students in school who are using it, medical assistants who take it to, to with their job. Uh, and so I'm just, I'm encouraging you guys to get that resource, get started today. Um, shout out to Shandrika who says, Regina, I passed my NCLEX. Let me see if I can smile like this. She says, um, Regina, I passed my NCLEX in February. Thanks to your study guide. I have to send a testimonial video in. I was a second time test taker. You are the best. Uh, I want to see that testimonial video. Congratulations. Congratulations. There's nothing better than passing your NCLEX and then coming back to tell me that you did it. I love that. So the questions that we're going to be doing today um, are going to come from my question bank. Yeah. Did you know that I had a question bank? I'm taking them straight from there. So let's get into it. Question number one. And remember, we're doing questions after we have studied the content. We're doing questions because we want to evaluate where we are. And so Texas, you're in the house. Today is all about evaluation. And if you want to get the question bank when this is all over with, it's really easy to get. You just go to remarnurse.com and my Q banks, you're going to love them because the price is right. The price is right. Just $29 for this amazing resource. Over a thousand, over 1200 questions for you right there. All right. So here's question number one from the Q bank. It says this, an infant. An infant with Down syndrome has an operable cardiac defect, right? The healthcare team holds an interdisciplinary care conference. Why is the nurse involved in this discussion? Select all that apply. All right. Number one, as an expert regarding needs of care of clients with terminal illness, as a provider of comfort for the family during this difficult time, as an advocate to communicate the specific needs of the client, as a liaison for the client and family in order to coordinate care, or as a witness to the meeting and discussion of care needs. This is it. We are we are talking about we are talking about questions. We, if you if you if you are down for the select all that apply questions, if you're down for the select all that apply questions, this is your opportunity. We're saying why is the nurse involved in the discussion for the interdisciplinary care team meeting, right? So number 1 as an expert regarding the needs of a client with terminal illness, as a provider of comfort for the family during this difficult time, as an advocate to communicate the specific needs of the client, as a liaison for the client and family in order to coordinate care, 
or as a witness to the meeting and discussion of care needs. And you guys know with select all that apply questions, one or more, one or all of them can be correct. One or all of them. But these are very tricky because you have to get all of the options correct in order to pass this type of question. All right. And this question is based off of what is the role of the nurse? So what do you believe the role of the nurse is? So I see the answers on the screen. A lot of people are saying all of them. All of them sound right. Right. Um, some people are saying two, three and four. The correct answer, though, is actually just going to be three and four. We are talking about what is the function of the nurse? All right. Not what sounds good. A lot of nurses students get tripped up because we think, oh, it sounds good. It feels good. It's right. No, we are talking about the duties, the responsibilities of the nurse. And the only responsibilities of the nurse here are three and four. So the nurse is responsible to advocate the specific needs of the client. That's what we do. We are a voice for the client. Uh, four, the nurse is the liaison for the client and family in order to coordinate care. So we as the nurse, we take in the concerns and we make sure that those concerns are properly acknowledged, properly verbalized to the healthcare provider. All right. So for, for instance, if a patient says to the nurse, my foot is hurting. All right. It is the responsibility of the nurse to go to the healthcare provider as that liaison, as that intermediary to the doctor to say, my patient has pain on a scale of seven, on a scale of zero to 10, it's a seven, right? That's our responsibility. Now, um, the question bank, of course, when you answer these questions, it will give you the rationale. It will give you the rationale for what's right and what's wrong. So if we look at number one, a lot of people say all of them are what the nurse does, but the nurse is not an expert regarding the needs of a client with terminal illness. That's not what nurses do. OK, um, we, 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 we're not an expert at terminal illnesses. All right. Actually, if you guys think about nursing school, we spend very little time. We spend very little time talking about terminal illnesses. Definitely not going to be an expert in that. All right. Number two, as a provider of comfort for the family during this difficult time. Now, now it may be true. Let me read this. That nurses do nurses do provide comfort. OK, we do provide comfort, but that's not the role of a nurse. That's something that happens as a. Um, uh, as a complement to what we are trying to do. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so a nurse's job, we don't send in nurses to provide comfort, but our presence there sometimes does that. I hope you guys understand that. All right. Um, and then as a witness to the meetings and discussion of care needs, there are uh, no formal, there are no formal roles as witnesses to healthcare teams, right? That's not a role, even though everybody who participates in the care will document what they've done, all right? But the nurse would not be, um, the nurse would not be a, a considered a witness in that aspect, all right? Okay, so select all that apply questions can be tricky, but if you think about what you're being asked, if you think about what you're being asked, then you will be able to, um, navigate them a little bit more quickly. And of course, knowing your knowing your content. I know we say it all the time, but you got to know what a nurse is in order to answer that question. All right. So um, let's try another one. Let's do number two. Let's see what we have here, what we're going to be talking about. So number two says this. Number two says this. A nurse working a nurse working in an ambulatory clinic is speaking with a client newly diagnosed with fibrocystic breast disease, fibrocystic breast disease. The client shows an understanding of the disorder when making which statement, when making which statement? Number one says, I should switch my daily coffee to green tea. Two says, symptoms will be worse before my period. Three says, I shouldn't wear sports bras. 
or four, the pain changes with the seasons. The pain changes with the, the seasons. All right, these are the type of questions that are in my question bank. They are challenging, but the idea is that they get you to kind of think a little bit more. They get you to kind of stretch. We call that critical thinking. We, we, we call that trying to make sense and use common sense of what's in front of you. So we have a client and we're talking about a client newly diagnosed with fibrocystic breast disease. Now, there is a lot that you can learn just by just by reading what we're talking about. OK, so you get a lot. Um so we're talking about fibrocystic breast disease. What does that mean when I say that to you? When I say somebody has a cystic disease, what do you know about cysts? What do you know about cysts? Think about that, all right? Because it's gonna, it's gonna help you to pick the right answer, all right? So you have to know the condition in order to be able to pick this correct answer. So um, the client has an understanding of the disease if number one, they say I should switch my daily coffee to green tea, Two, symptoms will be worse before my period. Three, I shouldn't wear sports bras. Or four, the pain changes with seasons. So the correct answer is going to be two. The correct answer is going to be two. Remember, um, when you have cysts, cysts tend to be very painful, right? Um, cysts tend to be very painful and they are precipitated. The fibro part is precipitated with hormonal changes. So hormones can make them worse, right? So the correct answer is number two, the cysts become more problematic and more noticeable with hormonal changes, right, of menstruation. And then um, caffeine, so, so we're talking about number two being correct because the symptoms are gonna come on before menstruation. And with menstruation, there are hormonal changes. So number one is not correct because caffeine is going to make uh, this uh, this condition worse, right? Three, I shouldn't wear sports bras. Sometimes sports bras, because they have support, they help with pain. That's right, Missy. Right, right, right. So sometimes when you have supportive bras, they actually help with discomfort. And then Four, the pain changes with seasons. Not too many people pick that, but it's not going to be a seasonal change. It's going to be more of a hormonal change that is going to uh, precipitate any discomfort. All right, let's look at uh, let's look at another question. All right, question number three. Question number three is this: A client was recently admitted with a fever and bronchitis. Listen here. The client was recently admitted with a fever and bronchitis. The client was diagnosed with adenovirus. Which of the following is the appropriate isolation to initi initiate? Okay. Which of the following is the appropriate isolation to initiate? And we're talking about adenovirus here. So is it number one, droplet? Is it two, contact? Three, standard, universal, or four, airborne, or respiratory, okay? And this is, again, these questions are coming right from the question bank. So if you have my question bank, you already have seen this question, you know what the answer is, or let me say this, if you have the virtual trainer, I've gone over this during isolation precautions and you know this information, all right? So if you wanna get into some questions, the question bank is the perfect place for you to do that because it's going to allow you to pick and choose the category that you want. So this would be under the uh, safety and infection control se segment. And I see a lot of people picking number one. You guys are familiar with the denovirus. So you know that, yes, uh, droplet is correct. Droplet is correct. The adenoviruses, they're very common. And there's a range of symptoms that you can have with the adenoviruses. Right. So you should be familiar that if a client has a dental virus, they can have fever. They can have a sore throat. They can have bronchitis, pneumonia. 
diarrhea, adenoviruses can even cause pink eye. So this is a very contagious disorder, right? This is a very contagious uh, virus. And so it's droplet precautions here for adenovirus. Did you guys know that? Did you know that? Gotta know your isolation preca uh, precautions for your NCLEX exam. Very good, very good for you guys that are showing up. We are getting it in with questions today. This is checking in with you. If you're studying with Remar Review, I love to check in with my students to see how well you are doing. So let's go, let's go here. Question number four, I have more questions. I have more questions for you guys. Okay, which client incident would be considered a sentinel event? Another select all that apply. So we're talking about sentinel events here. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? All right, sentinel events, oh my goodness, is number one, a newborn getting discharged with the wrong mother, a sentinel event. What about number two? A client who receives acetafetamine one hour late. Is that a sentinel event? Three, a client who falls from the bed and requires a head CT for potential bleeding. All right, this is, this is a select all that apply. Four, a client who does not receive a scheduled wound dressing change. What about five? A client who refuses to take a required blood pressure medication. All right, here it is, Sentinel Events. Thank you, I see the comments on the screen. I wanna see comments and I want you to share this video because a lot of people don't know I have a question bank. A lot of people don't know. And questions are what you should be doing the last two weeks up to your exam. Up to your exam, you should be doing straight questions, getting these questions all completed before you take your NCLEX exam. So we're talking about Sentinel events here. This is a select all that apply. The correct answer for this is going to be one and three, one and three. And a lot of you guys got this one right, which I'm really proud of. A lot of you didn't, but I think it's just because you didn't understand what a Sentinel event is. So I'm gonna read to you um, just what it is, all right? So a Sentinel event, as defined by Jayco, and we all know Jayco, we all know Jayco, right? Um, they are what keeps everybody safe, right? So a sentinel event is an unexpected occurrence involving death or a serious physical or psychological injury or risk of death or serious injury. So if we're talking about the right answers, a newborn going home with the wrong mother, that is a sentinel event. That's major, major, major. That can cause serious psychological harm to that mother, to those parents, right? You get sent home with the wrong baby, okay? So where is my child at? That is extreme parent, like panic, right? So that is considered a sentinel event. And you guys know how important it is, how, how hospitals keep infants safe. They put the little um, house arrests, things on the ankle. They, they, they make sure that the, the baby does not leave that hospital with the wrong parents. It's a crazy event um, if that happens. Number three was also correct. If you have a patient who falls and they get seriously hurt where they might have bleeding to the brain, that is, um, that is a, a extreme, extreme, right? That's an extreme occurrence. And the nurse, the healthcare providers, they might be reprimanded. They might be disciplined if the client has um, an injury that will be life-changing for them. So that's considered a sentinel event. Now, the other things, um, number two, a client who gets uh, Tylenol, acetaminophen, I should say, an hour, acetaminophen, um, an hour late, that is not a sentinel event. That's not a sentinel event, all right? Because it is normal for some patients to get their medications an hour early 
or an hour later, right? Um, the client who does not receive a scheduled wound dressing, again, this is not something that is going to um, involve death or serious risk of injuries. It's a dressing change. So we have to really make sure that we're reading and we're not reading too much. That's the secret. Make sure that you're reading, but not reading too much. Um, and then what about this? Uh, uh, number five, a client who refused to take a required blood pressure medication. Well, that client has the right, that client has the right to refuse any client. They have the right to refuse medications. They don't, you don't have to take them. Um, and that client may require some additional monitoring, but we would not consider that to be a sentinel event. Okay. Good job, everybody. Good job. I see the comments. I see people explaining and some people are changing their answers, but you understand it now. And that's why we come here every Monday so that you guys can uh, identify weaknesses and also identify strengths that you have and also learn more about how Remar helps you pass NCLEX. That's that's another idea. All right. So let's do uh, let's do the final question here, guys. Uh, it is this. All right. Number five, a client with an established IV site remains in ventricular fibrillation on the cardi cardiac monitor after an initial defibrillation with 120 joules. The client has a pulseless cardiac reading. The nurse prepares to administer which initial drug while cardiopulmonary resuscitation for the client resumes. So a lot going on here, but they're asking us what drug should the nurse be prepared to administer while a patient is getting CPR? Is it number one, is atropine going to help? Is it number two, is it amiodarone? Is it number three, epinephrine? Or is it number four, dopamine? All right, we're talking about what should that nurse be ready to prepare? I wanna see the comments on the screen. This is a very important question. There's a lot of information, there's a lot of distractions, but there's also some solid information. And really the answer is given to you before you see the, the choices, right? <laughs> um, and it may be obvious to some people, but actually a lot of people are not getting this correct. They're not getting this correct. So. Uh, this is why we this is why we do come together. This is why we do come together to make sure that we are learning. We're learning as a group. OK. All right. And remember, we have a mix of students here. We have some people in nursing school. We have some people who have graduated a couple years ago. And we also have some people who want to get into nursing school. So be kind in those comments. Be kind to each other because you never know who you're talking to. All right. So. The, the correct answer here for you guys is going to be number three. It's actually number three, guys. And the reason is because even though the client had a lot going on, it even though the client has a lot going on, this person has, in the end, pulseless cardiac reading. So that means they don't have a pulse. And when a patient doesn't have a pulse, what should they be given? Okay, so if a patient doesn't have a pulse, yes, if a patient doesn't have a pulse, they need epinephrine. They need epi. And yes, with NCLEX, it can be so tough because they'll give you a whole bunch of information at the beginning. Um, they'll say, okay, the patient was in V-fib. So you think, okay, so we're dealing with the patient in V-fib. And then they tell you that the defibrillation has occurred. They got 120 joules. And they say all of that just to confuse you because the real, the real status of the patient is that they're getting CPR because they don't have a pulse. And if somebody doesn't have a pulse, they need epinephrine. They need that epinephrine to start the heart. I'm so glad Crystal says, hey, I just studied this in the VT. And so that's what I mean. That is how studying the content shows up, 
right? It shows up because if you know the content, they could tell you this whole patient's entire history. They could say he was raised in Alabama. He went to school for 12 years, right? And none of that will distract you. Because you know at the end of the day, if I'm doing CPR on a patient, they don't have a pulse, okay? And, and, and that's where I need everybody to be because a lot of people didn't get this right. Um, and it, it, it's, it's a very uh, fundamental question. It's a very fundamental question. All right, so if you love these questions as much as I love these questions and you wanna keep going, I need you guys to make a simple move to get the Q bank, all right? And you can check it out at remarnurse.com. My question bank is gonna be really cool. It does have the presentation of the actual NCLEX. So this is what NCLEX looks like. Um, the newest questions that I have are in there. I give you content-based rationales, a ton of critical thinking, right? There is no strategies, I love that, yes. When you know your content, you don't need strategies. You don't need strategies. So um, the critical thinking is in there. Um, it's, it's, it saves you time. I would say when you do a question bank and you know the content, you can get through it very easily and you can learn a couple new things, right? You can learn a couple new things because there are so there, there's so much that you can miss if you are just reviewing content but not uh, making sure that you are appropriate for the exam. Don't waste any time and money. Don't waste any time and money. And I, I say this question bank is a super affordable because it starts at just $29. You guys know how expensive question banks can be. And um, I wanted to make sure that everybody who needed the question bank could get it. And that's why it is the price it could be. Um, that, that is why the price it is now. All right, so just $29, you have over 1,200 questions in there and you can pick and choose exactly what topics that you want to do. Thank you guys so much. Um, this, this was definitely a good time. We do this every Monday. Um, yes, we will definitely be praying for you. Uh, for those of you who are testing, questions in the question bank, there are over 1,200. And I do have one for RN and PN. I do have one for RN and PN. Um, Yes, this was a, a very, very great, great time, right? Um, and if you want to get started, we're going to put the link in the video. Um, if you're on Facebook, you can watch it there and you can actually get started right away. So we just did five questions and you see it, it, it was about a, the, almost a 30 minute session, right? It was about almost a 30 minute session. So you definitely have, you definitely have the ability to spend some time in that question bank right? You definitely have the ability to do that. All right. Um, we can talk about the question bank in a bit, but what I do want to do is I got to give you guys the, the motivation for this week. I want you to have this thought on your mind when it comes to getting ready for NCLEX. All right. Now facing the competition, when you sit down in front of that exam, I want everybody to imagine you're about to take your test right now. When you sit down in front of the exam, when you sit down in front of, of studying today, you need to face the competition. And do you know who the competition is? Do you know who the competition is? <laughs> All right. It's very simple. Some, some, some people think that the competition is other people. All right. Some people think that the competition is other people. Let me tell you, your competition is not anybody else. It's not anybody else. Your competition is your procrastination, okay? Your competition is you putting off things that you know you need to do. Your competition is you waiting to the last minute to get something done, all right? Your competition is, is unhealthy food. It's the, it's the food that you're choosing to eat that you know is not any good for you. You know it's gonna make you tired, right? You know you're addicted to it. The, the competition is the negative feelings that you have is am I speaking to anybody today? Right, the 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 the, the self talk that is negative. I was just telling my son, my five year old, he was practicing his writing today for homeschool. He was writing the letter E's, and he's writing the letter E's, and he's saying, "I can't do this, mommy. I can't do this." As he's as he is doing it, right? As he's doing it, and and I had to tell him, Michael, you cannot talk to yourself like this. If you tell yourself you can't do it you will stop doing it, 
right? Um, and so this is, uh, some people say, don't call me out. Yes, no, no, I'm calling you out today because some of you do this every single day. You are your biggest competition. You are your biggest competition. You talk yourself out of so many opportunities. You watch good opportunities come and you just let them go by. Because what? Because you, you don't think you are smart enough. You, you, you don't think you are brave enough. Let me tell you something. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. You want to become a nurse because you have a calling on your life. Uh, people don't just wake up and want to be a nurse. Do you know how hard it is to be a nurse? Do you know how much struggle you have to go through to get in nursing school, to get out of nursing school? And then when you actually work, you got to clean people. You got to feed people. You got to medicate them. You got to educate them. If you want to be a nurse, it is because you have a calling on your life. OK, you have a calling on your life. Um, and so when you are given that purpose, it means you're special, right? It means you are special. And so you cannot talk yourself out of your ministry, out of your gift, all right? Because when you don't do your gift and you're doing something else, you're miserable. And I don't care. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how um, how fun it is. You have an, a gnawing pain. You have an aching that I should be in nursing. OK, that I should be in nursing. And so um, you, you're, you're your biggest competition. And so when you are going through this week, I only want you to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Right. It, it's you versus you. It's not you versus, you know, that student in nursing school or that other person on your job. No, 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 no. It's you versus you. And so are you going to be better? Are you going to be better than you were yesterday? Or are you going to be the same? Right. And I know all of us, we're striving to be better. We're striving to be better. So this week, I want you to face the competition, knowing who the competition is. I want you to make better choices this week. I want you to do what you said you wanted to do, because you're the one who said you wanted to be a nurse. You're the one who said you were going to put in the work. You were the one who said you're not going to let 2021 go by without having your nursing license. And let me tell you, it's just a few weeks left in 2021. And so where are you at with having that license? All right. And so um, today we did questions. Today we, um, we, we, we thought about some critical thinking. We encouraged each other. Right. Um, and so if you already have the virtual trainer, I really want you to keep studying this week. I want you to get into the question bank. It's a very easy ask for me to ask you to do that, okay? Because it will help you. The things that I tell you guys to do, it's because they will help you. I'm not doing it because um, I wanna waste your time. I want you to have a license. I've been doing this for over 10 years. I want you to be successful, all right? Um, also, if you, if you don't know where to start, and you always hear me talking about my virtual trainer, just go to remarnurse.com because then you can check out the question bank and you can check out other things that I that I offer to help nursing students pass their NCLEX. So remarnurse.com, that is where I want you to get off of this live and go if you are not currently studying with me, all right? There's a benefit to this community. And as this year is closing by, you want to make sure that you have what you need to be successful. All right. Yes, I am here. I am going to be the one. Everybody else, I don't know. Um, everybody else, they may tell you to just <laughs> give it your best shot. But I'm going to be here pushing you guys because I know it will change your life. And I know you guys have a lot of people depending on you. They have a lot of people depending on you. There, you guys have kids, you're like me, you have children, you have parents, they need you to be successful. They need you to be successful, not only so you can be happy, but so you can, you can provide, you can provide a better life for those around you. You can provide a better life for those around you. Yes, at the end of the day, it's okay to be weak. It absolutely is okay to be weak because it is through Christ that we do all things anyways, right? And so um, I love I love that. Be be courageous enough to give God the glory. Give God the glory. All right. So a couple of you guys are asking me about the question bank. So with the question bank. Yes, the question bank, the, the questions are different 
um, for the virtual trainer. So if you have the question bank, um, you will see that the questions are, are much different from in the virtual trainer. Also, if you have the quick facts, if you have the quick facts book, the question bank has um, different questions than that. All right. So yeah, if you don't have my um, my email address, it's support at remarreview.com if you have questions or whatever you think um, you know, you're looking for. But the, the best way to get started, honestly, is just hit up the website because a lot of the questions you have, I answer on the website. All right. Um, so do it. Do it today. Esther says, I'm depending on myself and to show that my son, the hard work pays off. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is what this is about. Every week when we come together is to get you to the next step. And many of us have different next steps. So some of us, the next step is hitting the website, getting the virtual trainer. Another person, the next step is getting the QBank. Some of you guys still may need to just get the quick facts book, but whatever that next step is for you, whatever that next step is for you, do it and take it. All right, do it and take it. All right, all right, guys. I say this all the time. I believe it. I will be coming back out with another announcement. Oh. All right. You guys, you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. I'm going to run the video again. I just love it. I'm going to leave you with that. See you guys later.